I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're delighted to introduce you to a very talented author. His name is Kenneth Coulter, and he has written an impactful book, an important book, a book that you will need if you travel. It is called Locked Up in Canaria. It is a cautionary tale, and it is a raw and unembellished true story of unexpected challenges faced while traveling. Kenny's book offers unique insights into his own experiences aimed at informing and cautioning fellow travelers. We're delighted to have this author join us here today on Spotlight, and we thank our team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. Ken, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you. And we're glad you're not locked up in Grand Canaria, that's for sure. Let's start with the story um, behind the book uh, for the folks at home who uh, are curious about what Locked Up in Grand Canaria is all about. Well, I got arrested in 2013. Uh, I was having coffee on the veranda of my house in Grand Canaria, and the police arrived. And... Uh, at the end of the tale, really, what happened was I had a phone number in, in my phone, not my phone. A, a, another person was caught drug smuggling. And I knew this person vaguely from being in Las Palmas, sailing boats and everything. And he was caught and they found my number in his phone. And I was arrested, locked up, literally. Yeah, on the day. Unbelievable. So all you had to have is the wrong number in your phone. Somehow authorities found out about it. Boom, they're knocking at your door and they lock you up. How long were you locked up? How? What did it take to get out of jail? Well, that's an interesting point as well. Uh, at the time in Spain, the Canary Islands is part of Spain. At the time, I got out after one year, 11 days and four months. Uh to this day, I don't know what I was charged with. Now, the reason I got out in one year, 11 months and four days was in Spain, they could hold you for four years. But the oh. legislation changed in the July, which they had to release me. They had to release me because there's, no, there's nothing on me. So they and, can hold you four years at that point, uncharged, without going to trial, without presenting evidence against you, without any due process at all. And this is Spain. Spain is part yes. of Europe. You expect it to be, you know, as sophisticated as the UK or Ireland or anywhere else. Yeah. So you spent two years of your life in jail. In jail, yes. What was that jail like? Was it minimum security? Was it steel bars and, and uh, cinder block? Tell us about the experience. Uh, it was it was vastly overcrowded. Uh, the cells are single cells, but there was two people in each cell. And the cells are small, as you can imagine, if they're single cells. There's a bunk bed there, and if one person is getting ready or getting dressed in the morning, the other person has to lie on his bed because there's just not enough room to move. And if you don't have a decent roommate you have a problem and you have no choice who you can have as your friend you, it's not allowed they won't let you stay together if you know somebody or get on well with somebody you're you're just you're locked up like that and it's very very frustrating and the uh, phones were terrible in the place you no communication really so and for the two forever, years you were like, for the two years we were, you were locked up, did you get to talk to your family at all? Did you get to talk to a, a lawyer back in Ireland? Tell us about what kind of communication you had, what kind of hope you had, what kind of help you had. Well, first of all, when they arrested me, they took me to the local station. And I thought it was all a total mess, like um, something was wrong and they'd be released within a day or two. Like, but that didn't happen. And they supplied a lawyer. And he didn't speak a word of English, not a word. My Spanish is not good. So I was in a bit of a dilemma, but he never said anything. And when they finally took me to the prison, uh, 
people start telling me, oh, so-and-so is a good lawyer. Every lawyer in Grand Canary will cost you 5,000 euros. That's the figure. If you want a good lawyer, you've got to go to Madrid and get somebody because the local lawyers will not challenge the Gardaí's will. And that comes from the lawyers. Right, because it's kind of a rigged system. That's they work right. hand in hand all the time together. They're not going to go against the police. They're not going to go against the prosecutors. Um, were true. you able to contact your family members back home and perhaps ask to get the Irish government involved to get your secure your release? I did. I got. I managed after a long time to get uh, a friend here uh, back home in Ireland to send me some money because I had no money to take everything off you've been into prison. And it's a problem. And that's another subject. When you want to pay the lawyer when you're in prison, he asked for cash. How do I get cash? <laughs> so I asked him for IBAN and this bank details. He didn't know what I was talking about. It's incredible. And this happened when I got out of prison as well with another lawyer I picked up for another 5,000. I spent a total of 15,000 on lawyers. 15,000 on lawyers, and they basically did nothing for you. No, they you did were, not, absolutely nothing. You stayed the maximum amount of time the government was allowed to hold you, and then yeah. finally you were released because of change in the law, mm -hmm. fortunately. Otherwise, you've been locked up for four years, perhaps. Well, I really was nearly locked up for four years because I spent the next 18 months uh, signing at the courthouse twice a month waiting for the case to come up. And, and did the case did. finally come up? Yeah, it came up almost four years later. And what did they charge you with at that time? What did they accuse you I of? Didn't, I time? never knew what the charge was. They come out, uh, the lawyers come out of the court and they said, uh, there's a good description of it in the book. The lawyer said that, oh, they have come to a deal. You have to go back to prison for uh, six months. I says, well, I want a trial. I says, because you're not telling me what I'm charged with. Mm. Uh, I never forget it. He said to me, how long have you got your boat? I said, 16 years. He went away. They come into court. They come back outside again. And he said, okay, the judge says you only have to go back to court for, back to jail for a month. And I said, I'm not accepting that. And uh, this is the good part. Uh, they went away. Come back. He said, if you if you force this case into court, you will get 10 years. What so it's do? a complete monkey trial. It's a complete rigged system. Completely Prosecutors, rigged system. defense attorneys, Garda, everybody working together, including the judge, yes. to make you, you know, do whatever they say, pay whomever right. they want. Um, yep. And uh, people are getting rich off this. They're getting five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand yeah. dollars, and people like you are suffering behind bars. Now, for yeah. the folks at home who are wondering, like, okay, did Ken do something at all? You're you've had a law-abiding life your entire life. Well, I've, I've never, never had any problem. criminality. Never been charged with anything. No, never. And mm -hmm. uh, when I got out of prison, I got a call from a local radio station here in Ireland. And uh, I took up the whole show with them. Hmm. They kept asking me questions. They had a big feedback from the public. And, uh, but there's not a lot they can do, but it just let people know. Yeah. And when I came home, I was also in the papers. You could Google me. You could read about me if you Google me. Hmm. And uh, when I came home, neither the radio station or the papers, anybody wanted to interview or talk to me again. And uh, I went to the European Commission in Dublin, and it took me forever to get an interview. And I finally got an interview with one of the lawyers for the European Court, and uh, we were in there probably an hour. And I was told at the end of the interview, you were collateral damage. What did he mean by that? Oh, nothing. I didn't do anything in Ireland. There's nothing they could do. Wow. I got in touch with the European Court of Human Rights while I was in prison. I filled, I got the documentation, I filled in the documentation, and I got the papers back from the European Court to say that they could not intervene 
until the present domestic situation was sorted out. In other words, until the court case is over and everything they don't want to know. Unbelievable. And then Unbelievable. I go to the European Commission here in Dublin when I come home, spent months trying to get to talk to somebody, and I'm told I was collateral damage. Four years of my life, like I lost my house, I lost my yacht, I lost a Harley Davis motorcycle. They took everything. Unbelievable. Everything. Now, who took it? Uh, Spain? No, uh, no, the, the Gerdingsville. Uh, when I got out of prison, the only place I had to go because my house was gone, there was somebody else living in my house because it was foreclosed or whatever. Because That's you right. had been around That's for right. two years, yeah, yeah, everything was gone. And uh, I went to my boat, and lo and behold, one of the Gardaí Seville had taken over my boat. Huh. I found the papers in it, he had actually insured the damn thing, Unbelievable. and he had done damage to it. You know, uh, then that evening, uh, uh about six, eight guards arrived, Gardy Seville arrived, and threw me off the boat because I had no papers to prove the boat was mine. Did you eventually get your boat back? No, no. no. They took it. They, they so it goes to show you, out. and this was in Ireland, right? No, this was in Gran Canaria. Oh, this was still in Gran Canaria. Oh, okay, yeah, so Gran still... Canaria is a complete corrupt mess from what you describe. Oh, yes, it has No to be doubt. Out, yeah. But in Ireland, the bank took your home and sold it to somebody else. No, no, guess, no, 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 not in Ireland. I had my own. I had the house in Grand Canary, a beautiful house, and I had it on rent to buy. Gotcha. It was a really good deal and a safe deal. And yeah. uh, the people were lovely that owned the place. Everything was great. I done repairs for people up there because uh, I do a lot of that type of thing. Mm. And uh, so, of course, I wasn't there. Nothing is there. All my tools, everything I had there, nothing I could do. I wasn't back out again for the two years. And there was people living there. And uh, I went to see the lady where that I had got the contract with. There was nothing she could do. The Gardaí Seville took everything. Unbelievable. And Unbelievable. They, said they, can't, they can't do anything because when the Gardaí Seville come in, that's it. So you'd go, you're homeless, basically. You don't have a boat anymore. You lost your prized motorcycle. All of your possessions, basically, you haven't had an income in two years because you haven't been able to work. How old are you at this point? I'm 73 now. I was, and how old uh, were you when you were arrested? When I was, uh, 63 uh, when I was arrested. So 63 and, uh, years old and your life is taken away from you. Yeah. How do you rebuild? Just, just Well, I got home and uh, I have good friends at home. People uh, helped me out. I had a problem when I got home as well because uh, I had no more properties in Ireland. I left Ireland in 2000 and went sailing. Hmm. And uh, when I came home, I didn't have anywhere to live. But I just obviously wanted to get out of Spain. And uh, people helped me out. I got some work. And then I was lucky enough then it was uh, became pension age. Right. I got a pension, and uh, thankfully, I'm back up and running again, Thank enjoying you. myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Before we leave you today, Ken, what's your best bit of advice for somebody who's going to do what you do did? Either travel overseas to a foreign country or decide to live overseas in a foreign country for an extended amount of time? Just be very, very careful uh, who you're talking to. Uh Normal things when you go away like that into a foreign country, you will meet up with uh, native English speakers. And that's exactly what happened to me. And everybody does that. And uh, but the simple fact that these guys uh, had my phone number, I've done work for them. One of the guys flew me up to Sweden to repair his boat. Hmm. Absolutely no problem. I spent two weeks there. Came back. I didn't see him again for months. I thought nothing of it. He bought a boat up there, and then he arrived in Grand Canaria. So I had his phone number, obviously. Yeah. And so uh, be careful who you talk to. Be careful who you associate with. Be aware of the laws of the country that you're visiting. I just came back from Spain. I had no idea they had these draconian laws. Absolutely yeah. horrifying. 
Ken Coulter has written an amazing book. It is called Locked Up in Grand Canaria. It's a true story of his life that was turned upside down, inside out, and ripped apart as he was jailed for nearly two years for doing absolutely nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is an amazing read, a compelling story, and a must-have book for any traveler out there. Ken, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight. Thank you.